That's the two million dollar button. Every time it's pressed, two million dollars worth of government hardware goes into the drink off Cape Kennedy. They've been pressing that button lately like the doorbell at Fort Knox. Somebody doesn't want Uncle Sam to get to the moon because six rockets down out of six launches spells sabotage. And sabotage spells FSIC, Federal Security Investigation Commission. Our security office got its first lead on this cape caper when Dr. Rooney discovered some mysterious signals coming from the bottom of the sea. He and Wilkes got permission from Washington to investigate. Are we all set? All in order, Dr. Rooney. Dr. Rooney was one of the brain powers behind the moon project. It was his theory that our rockets were being drawn off course by radiation forces that were confusing the trajectory systems. That was the first clue to our picture puzzle. Who or what the picture was of was anybody's guess. One thing certain, our whole moon project was in grave danger. Professor Rooney and the diver are now crossing the lagoon. Shall I follow? Why should you follow when I can see them from here? They won't go very far. You mean you're going Only to... Only the diver. Not Rooney. He has too good a brain. Yes, sir. Thanks. here at the entrance of the lagoon. And that's what's sabotaging our rockets, Professor? The radiation signals interfere with the rocket's trajectory systems at the Cape. The rocket is drawn off course and uh, we're forced to destroy our own rockets. Oh, don't forget to check the Geiger counter for residual radiation when you get to the bottom. Activity. Come up, I say. I think I've got something here, Professor. There's a dome-shaped object, brand new. No erosion. I'll go over and have a look. Come up, Wilkes. disappearance of Dr. Rooney, the FSIC office knew it was up against a force that was playing nine pins with Uncle Sam's rockets and wouldn't be satisfied with just a spare. But the mystery of Dr. Rooney's disappearance at least solved the mystery of whether there were saboteurs working in the area of the Cape. They were there. 
And so another piece of our picture puzzle fell into place. Who the enemy was or where they were operating from would complete the picture. That's where my department, Section S, came in on the Cape Caper. Whoever's causing the sabotage will have to be apprehended without delay. Senator, I estimated our moon project has been set back 10 months. We must have results. There's no doubt in my mind that Dr. Rooney met with foul play. We've assigned Section S to find Dr. Rooney and check out his theories. Our code name for this operation is Lightning Bolt. Mills, have you sent for Captain Flanagan? I did. We have two of our best people assigned to Lightning Bolt. I've always wondered about this Section S. Captain Flanagan is in the Texas room. Very well. Uh, the section chief, Captain Flanagan, is in the outer office right now, Senator. I suggest that the captain brief you on the operation. Captain Flanagan's assistant, Harry Sennett, is already at the Cape. Now, if you don't mind, Senator, I think perhaps we'd better have a look uh, before we Very call well. the captain in. Captain Flanagan. We refer to Captain Flanagan as Agent 36, 2236. A woman? That woman, sir, was the delicate instrument who stopped those two enemy agents that secured the plans of Thor 6. Hmm, well, I hope Agent 36, 2236 measures up to form on this assignment. Show Captain Flanagan in. One of those agents had a multiple spine fracture after that doll got through with him. Quite a woman. An intelligent, no doubt. Captain Flanagan, sir. Oh, come in, Captain. I want you to meet Mr. Mills of security. How do you do? And Senator Woolner of the Appropriations Committee. Very pleased indeed. Shall we sit down? Lady, Captain, I hope you'll excuse me if I approach the subject without further delay. The point is, Captain, the Senator here and I would like to know the whereabouts of Professor Rooney. For two weeks now, every moment of our day has been taken up by the Professor's disappearance. How many people beside yourself are working on this case? There is only myself and Lieutenant Senate. Uh, just two people in this whole section. Amazing. Uh, is he working at this time? Unfortunately for our taxpayers, yes, he is. I beg your pardon? <laughs> you see, our agent doesn't believe in violence. He has much greater faith in the power of money. That's why the Treasury Department has given him unlimited funds to draw upon. He's free to spend whatever he feels is necessary to complete a mission, whatever the amount. The FSIC office decided that a playboy on holiday in Florida would be a good cover role while I looked for Dr. Rooney and whoever was turning on the tilt light in our moon game. So I arrived at the Cape with a blank checkbook backed up with several million dollars in the bank. After setting up housekeeping and getting acquainted with a few restless natives, I went shopping for a private seaplane. Hey, I don't know whether to be air sick or seasick. Be happy we made it without losing an engine. I'd better sell it to the American fast before it falls apart. It doesn't take long to acquire the habits of a millionaire, but I knew my happy circumstances would probably be as short-lived as they were for the deposed South American president I was buying the plane from. Anyway, until the completion of this caper, I bought rich, played the playboy, Senor. and acquired a few playboy props to decorate my spy Senor. trap. I'm so sorry, senor. Es bueno? You buy her then? Buy what? Oh, the plane. Yeah. Sure. It's perfecto. Oh, bueno. Except for that photo. Huh? Who is he? Oh, pardon me, senor. It's our ex-president. Oh, he's in exile now. But this was his plane. 
Oh, maybe when I get through with it, you can sell it to your next president. You better make it very quick then. Hey, senor? Of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't go away. You're part of the deal. It's good to be back in my happy hunting grounds. The prey is just the other side of this jungle. Bueno, senor. <laughs> my home away from home was the Hotel Florida, the spa for spies. They even had a safe at the desk where the guests could check their microfilm. I found that the pool was a good spot to keep the guests under careful surveillance. Hi. I'll bet you're George Hipplewhite, Harvard, 1955. I'll step out of your sun, baby. I'm sure you wouldn't want to be shadowed. How do you like my tan, Harry? Tantalizing. I discovered that there was one blonde Matahari who couldn't keep her eyes off me. Perhaps she just wanted to get a glimpse of my bank book. Blonde Matahari had an innocent-looking blonde friend, Sylvia. Sylvia was one of those restless natives I became acquainted with. I decided to keep them both under surveillance while they kept me under surveillance. It wasn't too difficult to keep my eye on them. It's a good plane. Uh, only been used to fly our ex-presidents into uh, exile. <laughs> With uh, all these fans. Comprend this in Yes, they pay plenty of money for this. Uh, of course. Hello? <laughs> What are you Absinthe. drinking? Oh, pardon me. In America, I always drink beer, too. I hope I get some blue chip stamps. 10,000 more books and I get a solid gold bowling ball. on a few extra dollars. I hate odd figures. There aren't many odd figures around here, are there, senor? <laughs> Remember, Fidel, I want the package deal. Plane, pilot, and... and that hostess. Si, senor. Guess who? Miss America. Guess right? Mm. Send me the papers and keep it cast and ready. Yes, bueno. Si, senor. <laughs> I've been gassed and ready for three hours. I was out shopping. How about dinner? Archie's back. So we'll live dangerously. Our thin ice is starting to crack. He's a very jealous husband. There he is. He's coming. Oh, Louis. Whiskey sour. And, uh, Louis, send them over to my cottage. <laughs> Archie? Archie, baby! How's my daddy Warbucks? How about some ping-pong poopsie? I had found that Sylvia wasn't really an innocent blonde. She carried around a silencer, her husband Archie. Whenever he was around, Sylvia and I couldn't speak. You'd never call me poopsie, would you, sweet? Patel had given me a cozy little cottage near the lagoon, where Dr. Rooney had disappeared. 
It was decorated in early Carlsbad caverns and came with wall-to-wall wiretaps and probably had the kind of bugs you couldn't exterminate. It had hot and cold running water, but it ran very strangely. I seldom leave the shower on when I go out for the day. Hot and cold running brunettes. Hi, Harry. Captain Flanagan, you're in my shower. Then play host and scrub my back. <laughs> you know, you're getting fat. Compared to whom? Turn around. Then don't tease the help. <laughs> Well, then, then go and get us a drink ready. And Harry, after a shower, I like my martini dry. One drip dry martini. With an olive. But you look like a modern Gibson girl to me. say you didn't skimp on your expense account, did you? I hope you aren't taking your role as a playboy too seriously. Remember, when the ball is over, your checks turn into rubber again. If you've come to check my expenses, this is the best they had. Since Rooney's disappearance, the Nassau people are in a panic. We've got to find them, Harry. That moon rocket is going off in three days. I think I'm on the right track right here. Thank you. These cottages are so overpriced, I get the feeling I'm the only one who can afford them. They don't seem to want any customers. Go on. The cottages on the north side have a clear view of Cape Kennedy. Well, why didn't you take one of those? Uh, no vacancy on the north side, they told me. And yet they're all vacant except one. A blonde and her husband are living in it. Did you give it the once over? Uh So far, I've only managed to conduct a thorough investigation of the blonde occupant. It figures. Come on, let's go take a walk in the moonlight before they turn it off. What? Don't worry, I'm just setting a scene. Make it look good. I think we've got an audience. Oh? all of our own. surprise. Mr. Archie White. Looking for something in particular? My wife, she... In the drawer? Uh... No, stay away from me. What are you up to? No, don't. Now you talk. <coughs> I... You're insane. I want to know who you are, who you're working for, and what this place is all about. I don't know what you mean. I could have you arrested. I could have you, you put... You live that long. Don't hurt me. Stop! No. I'll kill you, fat man. No. No, don't kill me. Spell it. Please. Please, I'll talk. If you... I'll tell you everything. Get down! <laughs> 
Check Archie's cottage. Come on. Fine. And I want to see that blonde you investigated. Grain silos. Grain silos? They belong to a brewery. I took some aerial photos of the place today, along the coast. Keep your slingshot handy. Let's go. Beeps leading. Towards the bedroom. Oh, really? The radioactive trail leads that way. This whole area is beyond the normal limits. It seems that blonde used expensive perfume. Pat. Take a look. You wait here. Uh-uh. Not a chance. Then you go first. Captain. Oh, sure. basement. It's still ticking away. I wish I knew where it's leading us. Well, what if we're caught? Maybe we tell them we came in to read the gas meter. Come on, Lieutenant.
We must be in one of those silos. Yeah, I guess it's one of those we saw outside. Very fancy green silo. Maybe it's been through urban renewal. Signals are getting stronger. This is as far as we can go. And we can't go back either. Yeah. Have you gone mad? What would you have done? Written out a check? tail turn into a mermaid. Harry, I'm beginning to be afraid. Yeah. Okay, honey. I've got to take another look at those doors. down again. Open panel two. Yes, sir.
fine. You can do it, baby. Don't be afraid. He's getting away. I want every trace destroyed. Understand? Call security and have him turn the place inside out. What the next move? Harry, where will you be? I'm going back into the cottage. Go on. I've got a courtesy call to make. Check with you later, Captain. Oh, it's you. You didn't think it was Archie, did you, Sylvia? Oh, you know, I'm worried about Archie. He went out last night and just hasn't come back. But you... What happened to you? Fell into a pool. What game are you playing, playboy? I'm on a scavenger hunt. You got a cigarette, honey. Mine are all wet. That's a strong brand. Just a toy pistol. Keeps you fresh boys at a distance. And now, if you don't mind, I think it's time for you to go. Oh? And how do I get out? Through the front door? Or, uh... Through the bookcase. Maybe you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you should have stuck to being a playboy, Harry. What are you going to do with that? Spit in my eye? That's some squirt gun you've got. Next time. It's for you. Shall we talk it over? Save your charms for that brunette. I've been wise to you all the time, Lieutenant. Well, it probably wouldn't have worked out anyhow. You're too skinny. <laughs> Who was that girl you had with you? My maiden aunt. She does it with health food. I don't know what you're up to or what you're getting out of it, but whatever it is, I can double it. Triple it. I'll uh, even get you a real gun. <laughs> no deal. I like this one. You shouldn't have stuck your nose into our business. I'm beginning to believe it. What business are you in, anyway? You, you might let a guy know what he's dying for. Now you're just wasting time. Put your back, your jealous heart. Too bad she didn't squirt a little juice on that smirk of yours. And to think, I came all the way back just to give you this. Who says money isn't everything? If it hadn't been for these, you'd be heartbroken. Oh, silos! Us. 
Guess we're gonna have to start from scratch. The picture puzzle still didn't seem to make much sense. We had knocked down two of the enemy's agents with our spy swatter, but they were just two gnats in a hornet's nest, and their deaths left us without a lead. I still hadn't checked Dr. Rooney's apartment, so I decided to drive to his residence out at the Cape, where I bumped into the blonde Matahari from Poolside, the one who had beautiful oh. eyes for me. Hey, you dropped your spy glasses. What a shame to hide such beautiful eyes. Think we might do... Uh, <laughs> Beg our pardons in a more secluded spot. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Case of 305, Professor Rooney. Only your friend has the professor's permission, sir. What do you mean, my friend? The young lady you were just speaking to. Apparently, blonde Matahari also had eyes for Dr. Rooney's apartment. And that meant that Dr. Rooney did discover something before he disappeared. And they were after it as much as we were. It's Kara. Yes. He's going up to Rooney's apartment. Did you find the tapes? No, I turned the place inside out. But... It's impossible. Rooney left them there. Have the trucks head for the launching area immediately. And I'm warning you, no more mistakes. Very good. On the chance they may not have found what they wanted, I decided to give Rooney's apartment a thorough sift. The only trouble was, I didn't know exactly what I was looking for. It was kind of like trying to find a whatchamacallit in a haystack. Either blonde Matahari had given the place a frantic ransacking, or Dr. Rooney had been a terrible slob.
Yes. A call from the Harry Senate. Yes, I'll take it. Hello, boss. I'm in Rooney's place. You better send the security boys right away. It sounds interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And Rooney was nice enough to put it all on tape. What's the next move? Sounds wild, but I think there's a blonde who can decipher the whole mess for us. Well, I'm going to want a full report on that blonde. You and your reports. I'll be right over and make a verbal one. That ought to hold them for a while. The important thing is they postponed Friday's launching. But Friday's launching has been moved up to this evening. What? Stop your shouting, Lieutenant. Everything's been checked out and they found all systems go. Blastoff should be any minute. Stop the countdown. Oh, but Harry, we can't do that. The rocket will be destroyed. Listen, it's just not possible. I've got to stop them. Listen. Harry? <sighs> This check will bounce. It's a matter of minutes now. In fact, at this very moment, the clock shows two minutes and 38 seconds before launch. There has been no appreciable change in atmospheric conditions. Better call in. It's Santa. Truck K26. Hello, base. Everyone is working under supreme pressure. The unaccountable failures of the preceding Apollo. Hey, I guess I'm kind of a geek. I guess I got his license at the office. I'm glad he is. Pity. 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 Pity.
You're on your feet. Come on. Watch him, Ed. I think he's off his rocker. Yeah, and he's off limits. Sorry, I was shipwrecked. Yeah, I know. You got washed ashore. Tell it to the CEO. Come on, he loves jokers. Come on, go ahead. <laughs> Crazy? <laughs> about time. Where you been, huh? Hey, boys, you got a pen? I got to write... Max! What happened? Hey, Sam! 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 Mr. 
Senate, stand perfectly still. I'm here behind you. Well, if it isn't Poopsie, you never run out of surprises. The fat man and all in one piece. Get ready for your last surprise, Mr. Senate. Now, wait a minute. I always drink your beer. I'll tell you what. I'll go you one better. A long life and $10 million to go with it. Oh, you're crazy. Fort Knox will guarantee every one of them. Go ahead. Uh, if you pull that trigger, the check is worthless. See, this is a transistorized pen. The second my heart stops beating, it starts transmitting. You must think I'm awfully stupid. Check it. Unscrew the cap. No, Max. Keep this one in one piece. Go on. Put him in the capsule. There. That's got it. Gary, I want you down here also. a wallop. I promised myself I'd never touch another drop. That is, if I could jump out of the way in time. Rooney. Professor Rooney. Then you're alive after all. We... Well, come on, wake up, Einstein. 
I just took ten years off my life looking for you. You might at least say hello. I'm a fly caught in a spider's web. And you've come to keep me company. <laughs> I see no reason to be overjoyed. <sighs> Who are you? Harry Sennett. Section S of the Security Commission. You... Up until now, that is. Where are we, Professor? Or the Security Commission. When I warned him of my suspicions, he said I was mad. And then, when the rockets first failed, I was accused of having sabotaged the experiments, only to prove my point. What's that thing? It's a model of a laser I was working on. An instrument of great creative properties and was controlled by a maniac. I was hoping to be of some use to mankind. Now, if I'm alive, it's only because I can still be of use to him. Who's him? He calls himself Rhett. No, oh, like the beer, that figures. Don't tell me you're only mixing hops, Professor. Rhett was well aware of my theories concerning laser rays. He's now forcing me to develop them for his use. My reward will be this. Look, observe. Good Lord, what is it? It's a hibernation chamber. Everyone's life is suspended indefinitely. When Rhett no longer has any use for a man, he doesn't kill him, but suspends his life through hibernation. It's a sort of death in life, a limbo, if you will. But it gives the victim the hope of being revived one day. It's of little consolation, I'd say. I... You're to come with me. Mr. Rett is waiting for you. Well, then let's not keep him waiting, honey. run of this place, don't you? What's your connection here, sweetheart? My father is held prisoner in the hibernation chamber. I haven't much choice but to follow Rhett's orders. Maybe two heads can work better than one. With your help, I might find... Yes, I'd like to help you. But no one can escape Rhett. You haven't a chance. He'd only destroy you. He's just too powerful. No one can do anything against him. Now go. I can't come any further. certain that sooner or later you would do me the honor of paying me a visit. You look disappointed. I was expecting something different. 
Are you always pushing your beer? I brew many things, young man, including an excellent whiskey. You care for a drop? On the rocks, if you can spare some of your ice. Thanks. And what can I do for you before entering your deep freeze? Yes, I'd like to help you. But no one can escape, Rhett. You haven't a chance. He'd only destroy you. He's just too powerful. No one can do anything against him. I've never killed anyone until now, Mr. Sennett. But you may be... The first. I'll decline the honor. You are the only unpleasant incident in my otherwise impeccable plan. Thank you. You've got quite a setup here, Mr. Rett. The decor must have cost a bundle. But I can meet any figure. I would be careful of a blind purchase. How much are you asking to... to clear out and leave me the keys? Ah, uh, Mr. Sennett. Very shortly, I will own the Earth itself. Look. This is my favorite view of the underground city you are now in. Situated practically under Cape Kennedy. This is a lava separation chamber. By extracting the volcanic magma from the Earth's crust, I obtain a limitless supply of energy. It can only cease when the world comes to an end. If I wish it to come to an end. I need but very few men to run my city. All is completely automated. Keep your eye on the monitor, Mr. Sennett. That's it. With an electronically controlled laser cannon on the moon, aimed at the Earth, I can control all cities, disintegrate them at will, just by pressing on a little button. Great idea. But who's going to take your cannon to the moon? Santa Claus? <laughs> I'll show you that too. Just be patient. <laughs> I should have warned you that I'm not particularly fond of personal contact. Mr. Secret Service is the deep sea tower from where my laser cannon, as you see, will be launched onto the moon. Yes, that's my Santa Claus. And he's about ready for his long journey. Now I'm sure you'll appreciate why I just couldn't allow your people at Cape Kennedy to precede me on the moon. How much do you think the governments of the world will pay to save their cities? Whatever it takes to hire a legion of agents to do you in, Mr. Red, you won't get to push that button much. What you fail to understand, my good man, is that unless I do press the button, my laser will automatically destroy the Earth city. Your police agents will guard me with their lives. For only I can delay world destruction. 
I think I will hibernate you after all. You will be awakened and appointed as my personal bodyguard when the world is mine. You're mad, Red Man! You're insane! You're out of your mind! Prepare the disinfection room. results within the 48 hours, I will take your laser and experiment it on you. 48 hours. It's just a scar. An old man trying to fight with the devil. We're going to have to do something, Professor. Senate is now our only hope. Is he now? Yes, I'm sure of it. Level two. Insert charge in the cave vault. sleeping bag. You know how to unzip this thing? Here. You're going to have to stand perfectly still. Go ahead. This is going to burn, Harry. Uh, oh. Oh. The metal clamp is too resistant to heat. You'll only be scorched. I know, but I can't walk around with a couch on my back. I've got an idea. It better be good. Everything here is automated. Maybe it works with an electromagnetic system. Hang on. Here, rated to Unit 6. Unit 6, 
Check electronic disinfection room. Prisoner is escaping. That's got it. Harry, what are we going to do now? You go to the professor and see if you can get him out. I've got to find some way to blast this place to kingdom come. Hold it. Come on. Run, Harry. Run, Harry. Go. Why did you break our pact, Carrie? Why? No, no, Rhett. Don't do it. I beg of you. You can't do it. You're wrong, I can do it. But the fact is, you are responsible. You betrayed my good faith. You broke our pact. And in so doing, Carrie, I'm afraid you have just killed your father. Look. No. No. How could you do such a thing? Stop. Stop. No murderer.
emergency. All units, isolate generators. Prepare for emergency launching. Close all black and white circuits. Hurry!
go for a man. Go on. Quick, you fool. Kill him. Go on, kill him. either.
Hurry, close it so we can get into position. Looks like the firing is automatic. I wouldn't swear by that, Professor. Huh? Well, then how we launch this thing? this. It has a transmitter. You can signal for help. Looks like this capsule can only be activated from the outside. Where are you going? Are you mad? The world needs men like you, Professor. I'm only indispensable to myself. Fasten your seatbelt. Sir, looks like we made it. Still got my watch, Professor. And we're in business. See that signal catch? Press it and relax till they get here. Your watch seems to do everything. Even tell time. Easy, Professor. Operation Lightning Bolt completed, Captain. Huh. By the skin of your teeth. You know, I can always count on you for a word of comfort. Would you mind preparing my couch for an afternoon nap? Si, si. Si, senor. All right. The checkbook, senor. The mission's over. The way you're panting, you're liable to buy her the Panama Canal. Well? Worth $10 million, and I couldn't even give it away. Here, Flanagan, you take care of the professor. And remember, until we land, I'm captain of my ship. Mind if I borrow your pen, huh? Thank you. You're welcome. How long can we stay aloft? Maximum speed. We have fuel for four hours, sir. Oh. Well, then we'll cruise at minimum. Okay. Oh, senor. Our drinks are ready, senor. Lovely, lovely. Oh, I've been waiting for you, senor. Am I still part of the deal? Uh, I'm afraid the deal's off. Hmm. <gasps> At ease. Lieutenant.